These FrameForge video tutorials take you step-by-step step through the basic functions and the special features of FrameForge Previs Studio, the groundbreaking pre-visualization and storyboarding software. With FrameForge Previs, you can easily build your sets. Real-time lighting with multiple light sources that combine in color and intensity and throw multiple shadows are at your fingertips. You can block your shot, set your camera, set your lens, you can even edit your sequence. You can bring in your actors and customize them to the vision that you have in mind. FrameForge is the most efficient and affordable way to communicate your vision from the page to the screen. Hi, welcome back. I'm Chris, and this is part two in our set building tutorial series for FrameForge Previs. Let's start off by diving into the Room Builder functionality. You can access the Room Builder from the welcome screen that appears when you launch FrameForge Previs, or you can access via the Sets drop-down menu as you can see here. The Room Builder is designed to look and behave like a set of blueprints. It's a top-down view of the set that you're building. You have a series of control buttons here along the top. The middle is your working space. And down here in the lower right is a button that builds the set you design. These controls at the top left are your wall creation tools. Whole rooms, hallways, single walls, and a cutting tool. These controls in the middle are your wall opening tools for dropping in doors, door frames, and window frames. Over on the right are settings you can change if you prefer working in metric terms instead of standard, working without grid lines, and an option to change the display magnification. Let's go over the wall creation tools first. The button with a square on it allows you to draw a contiguously walled room. If it's not apparent to you, to use any of these, all you need to do is click and drag with your mouse. When you do, the structure is created along with ruler lines that appear displaying the dimensions of the structure you're creating. The buttons with the double spaced lines allow you to create horizontal and vertical hallways. The button with a single line on it creates a single contiguous wall, vertical or horizontal. The button with a saw on it allows you to create a break in any wall you make. No need to saw through a wall with your mouse pointer though. Just click where you want the opening to be and it will appear. To change the position of any structure, just click and drag it. To change actual dimensions, click and drag the little black dot at the end of a structure. As you drag, you'll notice the length changing. Let's move on to wall opening tools. These allow you to quickly add door frames and door types along with inserting the doors themselves if wanted, as well as window frames. I'll create a single contiguous wall and show you an example of each. All you need to do is click the button of the opening you want and then click on the wall where you want it placed. Here's a single door. You can change the width of the door as well as the doorway orientation and side of the wall in which the door opens by clicking and dragging the little black dot at the apex of the door swing. Here is a double door. Here's a single sliding door like you might see in a closet. Here's a double sliding door like you might see on Star Trek. Here's an empty door frame. Here's a wall window opening. And this is how each of those appear in FrameForge Previs. Single door, double door, single and double sliding door, open door frame, and an open window frame. 
You can change the default wall height of the walls you create with Room Builder by editing the default wall options in your Set Parameters menu, which we covered in Part 1 of this series. Let me show you an example of a set I built with Room Builder, and then I'll show you the end result after I customized its look, added some actor models, and changed the lighting a bit. Now, if you're watching me do this and you're wondering if I can actually build a set this fast and use the application this quickly, mm, yeah, I can. Okay, I'm done. Doesn't look like much now, but let's jump ahead to my end result. Not bad. Start to finish, I threw this together in about 20 minutes. Let's move on. Let's talk about using the inset floor functionality. Inset flooring allows you to put a single location texture on your set. Go back to your set's parameters menu and click this radio button right here. The menu will expand to show you additional features. You can manage the size of the entire inset floor space as well as the individual tiles that make up that space by using these sliders or by clicking on the displayed values themselves, which change the interface to allow you to manually enter exact values. Aspect ratios are enforced in either case unless you remove the check mark where it says maintain aspect ratio of... you get the picture. Here, I'll move this out of the way so you can see how moving the sliders affects the inset floor within the application. Like I said before, you can assign exact values by clicking on the displayed values to the right of each slider. In this example, I want to create a 30 foot deep by 60 foot wide inset floor. I don't need to change the size of the tiles themselves, so I'll leave this be for now. Since this isn't the Brady Bunch and it's not 1973, the application does allow you to assign a texture to the inset floor. Click this button labeled Select New Floor Texture and assign one in the same manner you learned in part one of this series. I like wood flooring personally, so I'll choose this one, light hardwood. Click OK and your new inset floor is created on the set. Let's watch another example, Promise It's Brief. Wow, <laughs> I really am pretty fast. Am I right? So, you may ask yourself, why use an inset floor and what's the purpose? Well, it makes a lot of sense if you want to drop in a lake or a traffic intersection or something non-repeated onto the world of the set you're building. I like it myself because it allows me to build a structure that has different flooring from the outside world. I don't see a lot of light hardwood flooring growing naturally outside my office window. Do you? Alright, almost finished. Lastly, let me briefly say a word or two about global lighting. In the first part of this series, you learned how to assign a specific texture to the sky. What I did not mention to you at the time is that you can change the look of the sky over your world without changing the texture itself. Frameforge Previs users who own the professional or stereographic editions have access to lighting and shadow controls accessible as a tab over here on the right. Changing the look and the color of the sky is as easy as moving a few of these sliders. The sky will automatically be tinted by the sun's color, which itself can automatically change based on the height of the sun over the horizon. So if you're simply trying to make the sky lighter or darker, you may want to change the sun rather than the sky. Okay, let's recap. I introduced you to using the Room Builder, and we talked about using inset flooring to add a single texture over the top of your global ground texture. And we talked about global lighting's effect of the look of the sky over your set. For more information on these topics, make sure you check out the full program manual. I've thrown up some page numbers to get you started right here. Also, 
make sure to check out our upcoming tutorials as that I'll be showing you how to bring in the actors, props, and various set dressings that will make your set a scene and not just a collection of blank walls. Until then, see ya.